Based on a true story, a student relies on her wits and resilience to escape a man who has malicious plans for her. In Lugoff, South Carolina, Lizzie's class is interrupted when school officials arrive to escort her classmate, Lucy Jennings, out of the room. On the bus ride home, Lizzie asks her friend Amanda if she knows why Lucy was pulled out of class earlier that day. Amanda says she doesn't know but shares that the police were at Lucy's house the other day because of a domestic disturbance. When she arrives at their house, Lizzie sees her younger brother, Bobby, playing a video game. She then calls her mother to inform her that she's home. Elsewhere, a mysterious man digs in the middle of the forest. On the morning of September 6, 2006, Madeline, Lizzie's mother, sees her husband, Don, off to his hunting trip with a friend. She then calls for Lizzie to hurry up since she'll be late for the school bus. The teen realizes her mascara has dried out, so she heads to the bathroom to borrow her mom's. In her hurry, however, the tube falls out of her bag. During the car ride, Lizzie asks her mom if she can sleep over at Amanda's on Saturday night, and Madeline grants her permission as long as Amanda's mother is aware. At the bus stop, Lizzie realizes she left the mascara at home and begs her mother to take her back to get it. Since she's already running late, Madeline refuses and says she can make it through one day without wearing makeup. The teen raises her voice and implies that Madeline is inconsiderate, prompting her mother to tell her not to come home if she speaks to her that way. Annoyed, Lizzie exits the car and boards the school bus with Amanda. In class, Case passes Lizzie a note, asking if she's coming over Saturday night. Meanwhile, Don receives a call from Madeline while he's out hunting with Callum, who annoyedly reminds him to keep his phone on silent. After school, Case, Amanda, and Lizzie stand by the road where the young man offers his friends to smoke. Unbeknownst to them, someone is spying from behind the trees. Moments later, Case's ride arrives, so he asks Lizzie to keep his stash in her bag, fearing that his parents might catch him again. He then offers Lizzie a ride, but she politely declines and says she'll walk. Case kisses her on the cheek and joins Amanda in the car. As she walks home, a man wearing combat fatigues, Vincent Filia, calls her over and asks if she lives in the nearby house. When Lizzie confirms, the man claims to be a police officer there to arrest her for growing illegal plants behind their house. He adds that there are other officers in the house with her brother right now. Despite the teen denying the man's allegations, Vincent handcuffs her and places a device around her neck, which he says is a bomb that'll detonate if she tries to remove it. Meanwhile, inside the house, Bobby pauses his video game to answer Madeline's call. When he tells her that Lizzie isn't home yet, Madeline assures him that his sister will be home soon. Instead of taking Lizzie to the house, the man takes her deeper into the forest. While walking, he starts interrogating the young lady about herself, leading him to discover that she's chased, much to his delight. Soon, Madeline calls Bobby again and when he says his sister still hasn't arrived, she tells him to go to the end of the driveway and see if Lizzie's there. With no choice, Bobby heads out and calls out his sister's name. After a while, Madeline calls Amanda and her daughter's friend confirms that Lizzie isn't with her. Worried, the mother decides to leave work early. In the forest, Vincent admits to Lizzie that he isn't a cop and that she's been abducted. He adds that if she tries to run away, he'll end her life. Soon, he stops in the middle of a clearing in the woods, opens a trapdoor hidden under the leaves, uncuffs the teen, and orders her to go down the hole. Inside the underground bunker, Vincent removes the device around Lizzie's neck and tells her to stop crying, assuring her that she'll be okay. He then attaches a chain to a wooden beam and locks the other end around her neck. When the frightened girl asks if he will kill her, the man coldly affirms. Soon, Madeline arrives home but finds no one there. Panicked, she calls her husband but is unable to reach him. As she drives down the road, she sees Bobby with Amanda and her mom, Kath, who suggested Madeline call the police and return home while they continue searching. An hour and a half later, Madeline calls the police again but realizes that her first call was routed to a different county, prompting her to call the Kershaw County Police Station directly. Moments later, Don returns home and Madeline tells him what happened. Seeing his distressed wife, Don assures her that there's a logical explanation for Lizzie's disappearance. That evening, Officer Kitston and Samuels checks the forest with a search dog, though the former thinks the area has been contaminated by the people who searched earlier. Afterward, the policemen ask the parents if there's a reason Lizzie might have run away. Madeline admits they argued that morning but insists it wasn't serious. She also tells them that Lizzie doesn't have a boyfriend. With no leads, the officers promise to check on them tomorrow and assure them that Lizzie will probably turn up by then. Unbeknownst to them, Vincent proceeds to take advantage of his captive in the bunker. The next day, Don and his friends set off to search for his daughter. Meanwhile, the officers interview Case, who denies any illegal actions. Afterward, the officers talk to Amanda, who confirms that Case and Lizzie have been dating for a few weeks. 
In the bunker, the evil man has just finished defiling Lizzie, and as she buttons her blouse, the man washes up. He tells Lizzie that there's no point escaping because he placed traps inside and outside the bunker. Even if she does get out, he threatens to hurt Bobby. As if to appease her, he points out that the bunker has everything they need to survive for a long time. When the woman keeps crying over her situation, Vincent warns that the more she cries, the more he'll harm her. In school, the officers revealed to Case that Amanda told them he asked Lizzie to keep a stash for him, making them suspect him. That night, Vincent mentions that he has a wife named Peanut. He also notes that Lizzie's disappearance hasn't made the news yet, so he implies that no one's looking for her. He then gives her food, which she reluctantly consumes to avoid angering him. When Don returns home, the police inform him and Madeline that Lizzie's boyfriend, Case, told her to keep his illegal substances. They theorize that Lizzie took the stash to a friend, but Madeline insists her daughter didn't run away because she left her lunch money and belongings. Later, Samuels and Kitston report to Sheriff Thompson, who decides to expand the search since it's almost been 48 hours since the disappearance. On day three, the authorities and volunteers continue searching while others hand out flyers. Case approaches Lizzie's parents and introduces himself, though the father suspects that he was the reason why his daughter's missing. The conversation is cut short when the parents are called over to meet the sheriff. They ask Thompson if he plans to distribute an Amber Alert, but the sheriff says they don't have a vehicle description nor evidence that Lizzie was abducted, which are required for an Amber Alert. However, Thompson promises to get the word out. Devastated, Don walks away and Madeline comforts him. In the bunker, Lizzie takes comfort in the memory of Case asking her out that weekend. This is interrupted when Vincent calls her to eat. She does as told to avoid the man's anger, while her captors start sharing stories about his hobbies as if to connect with her. Meanwhile, Don and his friends trespass into the private property owned by the Benson Company to continue searching, unaware of a nearby device on the ground. In the bunker, they hear the voices of the men above ground. To keep Lizzie quiet, Vincent points a gun to her head until the men leave. Later, they watch a news report about Lizzie's disappearance, including her parents' plea for their daughter's safe return. Seeing them, Lizzie weeps, so Vincent turns the TV off and tells her that they'll never find her. On day four, Lizzie asks her captor why he chose her. Vincent says she's nothing special and that she was just in the right place at the right time. She asks him why he chooses to live in the bunker, but the man argues that he has no choice. He shares that Peanut hurt him by spreading lies about him, telling people that he defiled her. The police began snooping around his house, so he had to run away. He planned to take Peanut to the bunker with him, but the authorities took her out of state, so he decided to find someone else. Vincent explains that Lizzie is his bait, and when the deputies come looking for her, he'll detonate the explosives rigged inside and outside the bunker as his payback. On day five, while Vincent is asleep beside her, Lizzie spots the gun across the room. She carefully crawls over him to reach the weapon, but the chain on her neck is too short. Suddenly, Vincent wakes up, so Lizzie pretends she needs to go to the bathroom, convincing him to unlock the chain. Moments later, he hears a helicopter overhead, so he orders Lizzie to sit beside him so he can cover them both with an aluminum blanket. He explains that the aluminum blocks infrared, making them invisible to heat cameras. After the helicopter leaves, Lizzie decides to charm the man by touching his knee. She claims that it made her sad when he said she wasn't special. She then promises that she won't go anywhere and requests that he doesn't place the chain back on her. The delighted man tells her to lie down and because she's aware of what's about to happen, she imagines being with Case instead. On day six, Madeline notices that her husband is always out on a search, so she asks him to join the vigil for their daughter. However, the man says he'd rather do something useful. Offended, Madeline asserts the importance of faith, but her husband thinks it's all imaginary. The woman then storms off while Don goes to his truck, where he breaks down as he slowly loses hope. Concurrently, the police discuss possibly scaling down the search since it's been six days. In the bunker, Lizzie continues to appease her captor by feigning curiosity over his weapon. Vincent reveals that his gun is only a pellet gun and shows her how it works. Even though it doesn't fire real bullets, it can still kill when fired up close. That night, Vincent lets Lizzie out of the bunker while she's handcuffed. Using his night vision goggles, he leads her to his abandoned car to gather canned goods from the trunk. They then head to a creek to fill a water jug. Vincent also takes out a phone to text the significant other where he is since she leaves the food in the trunk for him. When Lizzie wonders why'd she do favors for him despite them presumably not getting along, Vincent says the relationship is complicated. Suddenly, they see a search helicopter hovering above. Before they return to the bunker, Lizzie takes one shoe off and leaves it for the authorities to find. On day seven, while Vincent is asleep, Lizzie takes his phone and texts her mother details about her abduction, but the message fails to send. To get a signal, she slowly opens the trap door and sticks her hand out. This still doesn't work, so she erases the composed message before returning it. When she sees the gun, she takes it and points it at Vincent's head. Unfortunately, when she pulls the trigger, it jams. 
so she places it back in the holster before crumbling to the floor. Meanwhile, at the sheriff's house, the police inform the parents that they're following leads in Virginia and Tennessee, but they're also scaling back on the search since they've already scoured 20 square miles. Even though the officers believe Lizzie is alive, Madeline is devastated by their seeming indifference. Weeks ago, Madeline and Lizzie watched the stars in their backyard. This was when Lizzie admitted to her mother that she was seeing Case. Although Madeline respected that her daughter's growing up, she advised her not to rush into anything. At present, Dawn apologizes to Madeline about their argument yesterday, and the couple agrees they won't give up looking for their daughter. On day 8, Madeline receives Lizzie's message, revealing that it went through. Because it came from an unknown number, Dawn thinks they should inform the police first. In the bunker, Vincent finds his gun is jammed and asks Lizzie if she touched it. She feigns ignorance and touches his hand, insisting that she'd never lie to him. When the officers learn about the message, Samuels and Kinston suggest that it might be a prank. Although Bobby thinks doing so might put his sister at risk, Kitston dials the number. Luckily, the call just goes to voicemail. Madeline decides to call the number herself, but the sheriff arrives and advises her against it as it might endanger Lizzie. On day 9, Thompson learns that the message was sent from a track phone bought three weeks ago by Catherine Heath. When the cops head to the woman's trailer home, Kitston recognizes the house, giving him a clue about who the suspect is. Kitson says the abductor is Vincent Phylaw, who's wanted for multiple domestic offenses charged a year ago. The officer visited the house numerous times, but Vincent was never home. Thompson reminds him that Vincent was thought to have fled the state, but Kitson says Catherine Heat was the suspect's girlfriend. Thompson soon interrogates Catherine, but she claims that she hasn't seen Vincent since a year ago. However, Samuels finds a hole underneath the mattress, and the woman starts aggressively denying their accusations. Despite this, the sheriff heads down the hole and finds an underground room, concluding that this is where Vincent hid whenever the police visited. Moments later, Kitson leads the others to a hut behind the house, where they find another underground space. The sheriff then informs Catherine about the message that Madeline received, wondering how Vincent could have the phone she purchased three weeks ago if she hadn't seen him in a year. Thompson adds that if Vincent harms the captive, Catherine will be charged as an accomplice. Because of this, Catherine takes the officers to the abandoned car and says she just places food in the trunk when Vincent texts her. However, she insists that she doesn't know where the bunker is. Then, the sheriff thinks the bunker is within walking distance from the car. Knowing they need to act fast, Thompson plans to leak the message to the media. That night, Lizzie and Vincent watch a news report detailing the message to Madeline and how the authorities believe that the missing woman is held in a bunker by Vincent Phylaw. Furious, Vincent accuses Lizzie of sending the message and spreading lies about him. He points the gun at her, threatening to kill her. Meanwhile, Don confronts the sheriff for leaking the message, so Thompson explains that he took the calculated risk because he knows Vincent is a coward and would never hurt Lizzie. Instead, he expects the suspect to flee the bunker. In the bunker, Lizzie convinces Vincent to check the sent messages on his phone, implying that the media made it up to get him to surrender. To get Vincent to pity her, she tells him she loves him and that she wants them to be together. He finally lowers the gun and asks what they should do. Lizzie thinks if the police find them, they'll arrest Vincent. With that, he asks her to be his wife, and she lies and says yes. However, she reminds him that he's still married, but Vincent clarifies that Catherine is his girlfriend, but he was in love with her daughter, whom he called Peanut. Lizzie asks what Peanut's real name is, and Vincent says that she's Lucy Jennings, Lizzie's classmate. Vincent tries to justify his sick tendencies by saying that people used to marry whomever they loved. He says that he doesn't want to lose Lizzie like he did Lucy, so the woman plays along and says she doesn't want to lose him either. Convinced, Vincent tells Lizzie to stay in the bunker while he tries to evade the authorities but promises to return for her. On day 10, Don apologizes to Case for his outburst during their first meeting since he now knows that the young man didn't endanger his daughter. In the bunker, Lizzie realizes that enough time has passed since Vincent left, so she leaves the bunker and screams for help. The sheriff hears her and as he approaches, he steps on a makeshift explosive, which turns out to just be a tin can with wires and batteries. Finally, Thompson finds Lizzie and soon reunites her with her family. Vincent is soon found guilty of multiple charges and sentenced to 421 years without parole. Meanwhile, Lizzie continues to rebuild her life and move on from her harrowing experience. Subscribe to watch more videos like this. Turn on notifications and leave a like to help the channel out. Thank you for watching.